Welcome to Distant Suns. Today we're going to learn how to play this game where you explore out, defeat aliens, upgrade your ship, explore black holes, discover treasures, and more. Setting up the game board, you're going to put the two parts of it together in the middle of the table. Randomize the 10 exploration tiles, putting five of them back into the box and the five you've got left into the spaces in the middle of the board. There are two sets of coloured mission tiles, blue and purple. Shuffle one of these sets and align them with the five exploration tiles. Then take the second set and on the other side of the board put them in the same order. So players all the way around the table can see easily which shapes align with which mission. Take the stack of modules and just order it from number one through to five on the bottom and just put it within reach of all players. Each player should then take a Cosmos sheet and a pencil from the game box. Included in the box are shape templates that are going to help you draw the different exploration shapes onto your sheets. Just put them in within reach of all players. Played out over three rounds, each will be either four or five turns long. Each turn has two distinct phases, assign and then draw. The rulebook suggests letting the youngest player be the first player, but you can also decide this randomly. That person becomes the active player and takes the top module from the stack. Each module has two symbols on it, one that is you will draw it and everyone else will draw this. You're going to take that module and slide it into two adjacent notches on either side of the board. Thus, you'll be indicating the shape that you will be drawing and the shape that all other players will be drawing that turn. New shapes must be drawn next to at least one adjacent space of a previously drawn thing on your Cosmos sheet, and you'll start in the bottom left for the first turn. You must draw the entire shape, though you can mirror it or rotate it. You'll be wanting to cover up the aliens and upgrade spaces, but you can't cover the starting space the treasure spaces or the outer worlds which are around the edges of the sheet. You must draw the shape if you can following all of the rules. If you can't, you simply skip it. Once you've finished drawing the shape, draw the icon of that shape into it. It will help you for scoring later on. Whenever you cover an upgrade space, you'll immediately cross off one of the circles on your upgrade zone of your Cosmos sheet. On a future turn, you can then spend this to reduce the shape that you're having to draw by one hexagon. You can actually use two upgrades on a single turn. This allows you to draw a shape that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to fit in, though you can't cut a shape in two. Getting to the outer world spaces is a bit of a race. If you get to either of the adjacent spaces next to one of these planets and you're the first player, you'll take the most points, which is either the 10 or 15 points. If multiple players do this in the same round, they all get the most points. After this, anyone else gets the lower value. After everyone has finished drawing, the player to the left of the active player becomes the new active player, picking a module up and assigning it, then drawing and so on. When either four or five of the modules have been placed and you can no longer fit any of the modules in, then it's time to prepare for a new round by simply removing the placed modules and restacking them. Play continues for three full rounds and then it's time to score. Players determine their points by counting the number of alien spaces in your grid that are covered by the required shape. You count the number of upgrade spaces that were covered by the required shape. You count the number of treasure spaces on your grid that have at least one adjacent space covered by the required shape. For the cluster objective, you count the number of times the required shape appears in your biggest cluster of that same shape. Then you score for the black holes, and you count the number of times the required shape covers at least one space adjacent to a black hole. You don't just get one point for one of these things, there's a nice little table that allows you to times up. So for instance, if you fulfill an objective once, it's three points. But if you fulfill the same objective three times, you'd get 10 instead. There's an area on the score pad to note down how many victory points you've got for visiting those outer worlds. You'll also get 10 bonus victory points for each treasure that you completely surround with any shape. Unfortunately, you'll also lose points for aliens that aren't covered by any shape. At five points lost, they are. 
pesky aliens. The player with the most points wins the game, and if multiple players are tied, they share the victory. And that's how to play Distant Suns.